So now what we do, we are live streaming across the globe. Mr. Nathan, who is there? Um, I promise the camera will not turn in your direction, so if you're feeling slightly scruffily dressed, you're okay. But we're on YouTube. It's been a, something we've tried this year, and it's gone down really well. It's been fantastic with our, with our sort of boarding parents, full boarding parents, who've been watching us across the globe, uh, which is fantastic. Um, gosh, the upper sixth is a special year. Um, it's, it's a year for me where it's the culmination of that self-confidence that's grown over the years, whether in the first form, third form, or in the lower sixth. It's self-belief. Um, it's seizing the opportunities that are here, but in a moderation this year. But I do get a sense that it feels as if it's a little bit of pressure. I was just talking to a few of you now. It's the university applications, it's making decisions, it's to gap year or not to gap year, it's to insure that car or not to insure that car, whatever it might be, there feels a bit of pressure. And I'm not going to lie, there is. There's a step change. It seems every single month now there's a, there's a pattern, a process to follow through. With that in mind, please use your children's tutors. Um, and Mr. Radman has had a sick call. This is all Mark in terms of all the other advice that can be provided to support you and, and your sons and daughters. Well. That's really important. That. And keep talking to us as well. Keep talking. Um, but I love the opposite because there's just a little sort of glint in the eye. And this is a wee while ago, but I was a housemaster. And uh, I, we'd moved from where we were, where we lived, out in a little village, uh, the boarding school in the Midlands. To, to be in the town. And one of the boys noticed in my house, he went, Sir, you've just moved house, haven't you? And I went, Well, yes. And he said, So you used to drive in, didn't you? And I went, Well, yes, I did. He said, Well, you're walking now, aren't you? Yes. Does that mean I can borrow your car parking space? Chucky <laughs> <laughs> monkey. Um, but, but that's the sort of thing that, that happens in the upstate, and I love that. Absolutely do. I would also want to say um, the upstate have really started well. Um, they are leaving, and one of the words for me in an upper is legacy. Um, we've got Sophia and Ed, who are going to speak to you later. They are now Estonians who left last year on a few tips and techniques of what to do and to how to support your children. But it's about leaving legacies too, and that's, that's hugely important. Um, there is a step up, as you've noticed. We have 125 teaching days until exam leave kicks in. That's not that long. It's slightly less long if you're doing 10 GCSEs, I have to say, but that's not that long. And so already we should have those habits and those routines that Mr. Badger talks about to be hitting the ground running, working hard, focusing on what went well at AS, if, if ASs were taken, but really driving forward. A couple of things key to train yourself almost as a professional sportsman or woman, get used to working at 9am and at 2pm because that's when the exams kick in. Get enough sleep, it's really important. And if I can be honest in here, I am a wee bit worried about parties. If I can be really honest, they worry me at the minute. A little, not a lot, but a little, that some of our upper sick pupils, and a wee bit in the lower sick, are probably going to too many parties at this time of year and beyond. And, and if we can go for the deferred gratification approach, that would be really helpful, if I can be honest there. That's, I'm a bit worried about that. Um, that links to sleep, of course. Eight and a half hours is a bare minimum, please, if we can try for that. Um, I talked about preparing for what, 9 and 2 p.m., but preparing for the exam <coughs> length as well. Training the body and mind so that even in the holidays as we move forward, for mock exams, you're ready and raring to go. Talk to me a bit about the tutors. Um, please use them as much as you can. Now, I, made, I always make notes after these things, and this time last year I said, you spoke for way too long. So at that point, I will now be quiet. I hand over to the professionals. So I'm going to hand over to Mr. Radman, uh, head of the sixth form, as you well know, to talk about the real <coughs> nitty gritty and the handouts and homework that you are sitting on for in your labs. So thank you. Hello, hello, YouTube <laughs> and, and parents. Um, you, you treated to what the, the sixth form had in the briefing uh, when I saw them uh, several weeks ago for the very, very first time uh, in the upper sixth. So I'll be referring to this handout, not relying on um, any other technology. Um, as Adam suggested, we hit the ground sprinting, uh, and maybe that, that first bullet point is there intentionally, and I'll come back to it, in terms of enjoying, but it is their last year of their best years of their lives, hopefully. Um, so there is a sense of <coughs> how can we maximise uh, that enjoyment in the most appropriate way. Adam has already alluded to the party scene, I'll, I'll come back to that. And we are a character school too. Um, so yes, 
there are pressures, you may not be aiming for A's and A stars, um, you might be aiming for a good solid C and that represents your best efforts. Um, so gratitude and being positive are definitely aspects we'd like to foster um, and encourage. Um, allied to that, the second point, the team to support, Adam's already mentioned the, the tutors, the team of tutors. Um, they'll be meeting tomorrow morning to look at the first set of atoll grades, attitude to learning grades, which is all about um, approach within the subject, within the classroom, beyond the classroom. Um, if there's anything that can be done to uh, further that enjoyment, ideally your sons and daughters are enjoying the subjects that they've chosen to specialise in in the very last year um, of their schooling. Um, again, I encourage the sixth form to make best use of, of tutors um, and me, Mrs. Allmark, um, we've got Estonian contacts as far as work experience and um, anything else that can help them to make sure that they've made all the right choices and have had all the right support uh, as they head on to the great wide future. Um, I did reflect on AS and those six results, um, some of those internal exams. Um, we have to say that some, some pupils needed to learn from, from that experience as to what didn't work um, and obviously not, not replicate that. I spoke to them about setting the course now, not leaving it until um, the summer or till after Christmas or whatever. As Adam suggested, we've only got um, X number of lessons uh, contact time left. Um, I also spoke about using private study sessions. We do have a schedule across the campus that if you can't find a quiet space in the library, or in the sixth form centre, which is under new management. Mr. Nation's putting a huge amount of care and love and tea bags into the sixth form centre, making sure that it's the most welcoming place, but also an environment which one can have academic discussions and complete academic work. But there is a, a rotor of classrooms across the campus where you can go in as a teacher assigned to the <coughs> class at that particular time. There'll be very few students there. You can work in quiet if, if that is what um, is required. Um, some pupils won't have a choice as to whether they go to that particular classroom. Um, they'll, they'll be expected to go there, but um, quite a few pupils have to use that as, a, as an option. But they want to go on supervised private study, <coughs> SPS. And I apologise for the series of, of acronyms. I'll try to flesh them out. Um, I've already mentioned the atolls and supervised private study. There's a lot of tracking. We've come full circle. Those of you who might recall, <coughs> orders every three weeks, those orders. Um, grades. We've now got at all grades every three weeks. It gives people a chance to, to improve, to work on, fine tune and get feedback within three weeks, not, not having to wait three months for, for the next set of reports and grades. So that should hopefully keep and promote that um, academic dynamic. <coughs> Our prep time is crucial. It's knowing yourself, do you not work well late in the evening? Um, do some people organise their lives so that by eight o'clock in time for bake off? Um, they are um, able to sit back and relax and um, enjoy the fact that they can watch a guilt-free uh, bake-off whilst it's still on uh, <laughs> Friday nights, if you do party on a Friday night, um, if you're not part of everything that the houses offer on a Friday night, um, you've lost 20% of your prep nights for the week. Does that have an impact on Saturday morning? Gareth Pearson at our sixth form assembly this morning chatted to, to the sixth form guard uh, the ways and means we have at our disposal for just ensuring that no one's partying too hard um, on, on, a, on a weekend. And so we are conscious of the fact that we want to, again, offer every opportunity that our sixth formers are free to work and not pressured into the so-called party, party scene. Uh, moving on to the rest of their lives, personal statements, as you've no doubt been fully aware of. Um, I have heard that some, some people are keeping their personal statements very personal away from their their parents' prying eyes, sharing things with tutors. Some tutors, I think, are on to seventh and eighth drafts. Um, that's all being developed and refined. Um, but the expectation is that those will be finalised very shortly. Our tutors complete the school reference, which then I have a look at and Adam Williams has a look at before they come back to me and to Mrs. Ormark for uh, posting. If your son or daughter ward is not in the position of having a clearly defined future, no doubt the tutor is chatting about that. And whilst it's the season of personal statements and references, it is worth getting something down on paper. But even if a gap year is definitely planned, um, in a year's time, when we get to application, tutors have got a lot to work with. 
be built on your personal statement. Um, so it is, it's definitely worth encouraging your child, if, they, if they're not wishing to apply, have the clue what they're going to do. Um, nonetheless, they are still putting something, um, something down, working with their tutor in that, in that regard. Um, I spoke about the revamp sixth form centre, and then I came back to, um, to enjoy, be positive, be grateful, and I said, be sensibly selfish and be demanding, not only of themselves, but crucially of, of their teachers, of their tutors, ask, demand, um, and be selfish appropriately and in, in that kind of way. I'm going to hand over to our two Sternians. There are, you'll see on page, sides three and four, so the second page, um, I asked the students, two of the students, of three, one, one is seated here and will be able to provide um, that in the flesh, uh, but I asked them just to give some feedback as to how they've got their A star for English, that I could feed that back to obviously other English students at A level and GCC, but also to extrapolate, for, even for science and mathematical subjects, what worked for them. Um, as was advertised, Charlie Morrill Brown got 400 UNS, 400 marks out of 400. He didn't obviously drop a single mark. How did he do that? You'll notice I kept, when I cut and pasted from his email, I kept the spelling mistake. Um, <laughs> so, so you can get 400 out of 400 A level English um, and still not uh, quite produce what we might expect the third form to, uh, to have mastered. <laughs> anyway, um, without further ado, if, if you take that as some, some prep, some independent study, maybe have a look at what um, those two students said, identified by <coughs> C and H, um, and now we have um, S and E, we're going to stand up. Um, and introduce themselves and just chat and ask the questions. So please feel very free um, to interrogate and ask them, well, what about this and what about that? Um, although they're quite a few teachers here, I think we're robust enough and our skin is thick enough that um, their honest answers are not going to terrify us. You said it. <laughs> right. Thanks, Sophia and Ed. So my name is Ed Thomas, um, I studied Economics, English and Geography last year. I'm taking a gap year at the moment, uh, but I've got a deferred place at Bath to be business next year. Um, my name is Sophia Brockman-Smith, I did English, Business and German for A-Level. <coughs> I also am on a gap year, that's why we're here and not uni. Um, and I've got a deferred place at Exeter University to study International Business Management. Um, so, in terms of tips for what I learned in the upper six, I'd say the best piece of advice I could give was to uh, balance your time, but on like uh, weekly, because a lot of advice was like do sort of five minutes language a day or learn quotes for five minutes a day, but a lot of days you don't have time to do that, especially in the upper six. Like if you've got parents' evenings, rugby games, things like that, it all stacks up. But if you look at everything over a week, you'll know what you have to do that week. You'll know when it's going to be busy, when it's going to be quiet. Especially when you get to sixth form as well, because you get free periods, you have a lot of free time uh, that you just need to organise. So just look at things <coughs> weekly as opposed to daily would be my advice for that. Um, some of my advice would probably be to use your peers as well. So especially when it got close to exam time, you have a lot of friends who are doing the same subjects as you coming and saying, oh, could we go through this plan? We actually I spent an hour just going through different essay plans just to work out the different viewpoints that we each had so that you're not only getting your own view, you're getting someone else's and you're getting someone else's perspective. And it also really helps if you have someone else tutor, tutor you or if you tutor someone else, you've got it taught in a different way or you then have to really think about how you understand something and you have to be able to take it right down, be able to quite simply explain it as you know, a teacher should be able to. It makes you really consider whether or not you can know it well enough. Um, in terms of time management, as Ed said, I'm not very good at working in the evenings, so I'd always have finished my work by 8 o'clock. I don't mind getting up early in the morning, have a and I didn't feel too bad about it. But yeah, it's just, it's being reasonable. It's not saying, oh, today I'm not going to have any time to myself, I'm not going to sort of go out and sit with my friends or whatever. It's realising that you do need a break. Yeah. Are there any questions we're going to have to answer? I don't know if it's going to affect well, it doesn't really affect you, but I know it's uh, what you've been speaking. Your, if you like, on the humanities side, is there any equivalent advice that's been given out 
to those who are doing the sciences, which don't have SE plans, which don't have that sort of thing, is it being provided somehow? Um, yeah, well, we have a lot of friends that would actually use them form them as a study group, so for maths or for physics, for some theorems and things, they go upstairs and just work through the issues together, and for if someone finds it difficult, the teachers obviously aren't free every second of every day, and if you <coughs> can't schedule it, or if you're too late and sort of suddenly think, oh actually I just have 10 minutes now, it, they find it quite helpful to go through with someone else, and there were a couple of sites that they managed to look up, I remember them saying that had, instead of just answers, they had explanations, and sort of talk through, um, how they got to their final answer rather than just the answers in the back of the textbook and actually the um, physics. Yeah, well I did a physics at AS um, and I think the sciences have an advantage in some way because you can actually look at a syllabus and go through, highlight what you do and you don't know. If you're doing a humanity subject and there's something not quite right with your essay style, that can take quite, quite a bit of time to get right and it could be quite hard to explain what you're doing wrong. but. Uh, if you're doing sciences, um, you can pinpoint what you don't know and then go to your teacher and ask them about it. I think that's a, another big thing that I found in sixth form, especially up six, is a much more mature uh, attitude towards learning, if that makes sense. So instead of waiting for the teacher to say, you're not doing well in this, have a detention, you'd go and speak to them. Um, so I've got a, I had a, uh, I got a C in my English AS. Um, so obviously I need to put in a lot of work to retake that exam and then do well in the A2 as well. Um, so I used to Saturday mornings, so me and Mr. Rabin would go for about an hour just going through the AS things and then work on the A2s in class. So I think you can, uh, whether it's humanities, whether it's sciences, you just got to take the time available towards you and just be mature about what you want to get at the end of the year. Just be honest with yourself, what you need to do to get there really. Sorry, the reason I left up so enthusiastically was that, <laughs> that was exactly the question I asked the sixth form. Uh, these were essay based subjects. Um, and what they distilled was the fact that it does come down to you. It might be ironic at a fee paying school, but it was what are you doing beyond the classroom? What are you organising beyond the classroom? What are you demanding uh, beyond the classroom? I'll sit down now. <laughs> um, I'm interested that you are both doing the
So it is a bit of a, you know, better to, it is probably better if one possibly can <coughs> do it when you're applying. No, I think, again, it might depend on the subject, but um, I think you've won the hallowed prize of an Oxford place, you're probably leaping to get, to, get to Oxford. Yeah, yeah I, I would just say that because the course that I wanted to do varied at different universities, and the bar actually, when I looked at them, they just flat out said if you're looking at doing deferred entry, we won't, we won't offer you a place. Um, what it meant for me was that I knew when I applied I was deferring. I knew that I wanted Bath as one of my options and so I didn't include my gap year plans in there because I knew that also I hadn't made up my mind what I wanted to do, there were so many different things and I didn't want to start saying oh I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to have all of these things to offer you and then not have done them so I just applied and then I didn't actually end up choosing Bath as either of my options but it meant for me that I was that much more flexible and then I could, um, obviously it depends on the university and how much they want you, but I did email them a few days before uh, results day and said that this is what I'm planning and they said that's fine, email us on results day. And it meant that I then had the flexibility to now decide what I want to do this year when I really know where I'm at and but still have a place which is really quite comforting. Excuse me, could I just add something to that as a bit of experience as well? So we have a son who took a gap year and then went to Exeter and what's it to have to use and the prep. And if I'm honest, and he'll be honest with you, at first year was a bit of a down script for it and he performed quite badly. This last year he applied to all the big four consulting firms, accountancy firms, the budget banks, the internships. I'm sort of in that space, but I was shocked to realise that each of those companies wanted every module of every year's score through university. And one of the accountancy uh, firms rejected him for an internship because of his first year grades. Lesson we would have learned from that is just if we'd been aware of that, and I think if he'd been aware of that, he might have just approached that first yeah. year. And he would say now that the gap year, he sort of went into his first year still in the gap year mode. So the first six, nine months was a bit of so just a, just thought Thank that's you. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Can I just ask about your experience of getting your places? Um, in terms of the all the prospectuses seem to stay quite high grades. Is that what they actually offer in the end or um, how did you find it? Well it does tend it's obviously very difficult and I I actually had a friend who built up a really good relationship with uh, the admissions <coughs> tutor of Harper Fairs um, University and they lowered the offer quite substantially because she explained her situation and sort of said no matter how much I'm trying she was resetting the exams and it just didn't look feasible for her to get those grades um, and so they did lower it and there are other things if you but you do have to convey it either in your sort of personal statement or something obviously then got to make the other attributes shine and sort of you know whether it's sport whether it's community service whatever it may be there's obviously everyone has something to offer and you've just got to put that forward play it much more strongly i suppose and there is a chance but obviously it doesn't happen. so most of your colleagues found that they asked for the, the grades that they could. yeah there is the offer of sort of EPQ and things like that, and some universities do do it based on UCAS points, which can be attained through DOB, CCF, and various other different things. Um, but yeah, I guess it really does depend on the individual case. The majority of them aren't massively flexible, but they can be. Yeah, Mrs. Ormark will cover a bit of that oh, as right, well. So, yes. um, I mean, that's absolutely right. From your experience is dead right. Um, the broader spectrum is, yes, it might be a really different in places, but you'll hear about that in a, in a second. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Right, what a lovely pair to carry on from. Um, I thought I'd just sort of outline a bit going on from that and, and, and how we approach uh, pupils making the university choices. Uh, every year I go to a, a huge UCAS conference and I usually manage to, to get first hand advice. This time I call it the CEO of UCAS, a very awesome new scary lady called Mary Kernett Cook. And I just want to make sure that what we suggest to our pupils is actually current 
and, and, and relevant in their choices, and certainly looking at how our pupils progressed in the summer. What we say is of five choices, that two of them can be aspirational. So we look at the, the pupils' grades, predicted grades, which um, Mr. Radman takes great uh, trouble in getting them refined and available to pupils, and they are totally ready now, obviously. Um, and we look at two that can be two grades up, two university choices, two should be to their predicted grades, and maybe one a bit less. When it comes to offers, and we're usually very, very lucky with offers, um, of the five offers, they have to choose two, and the first choice should be the one that they are really wanting to go for, usually with the higher um, requirements in terms of grades, and the insurance one they should also be most definitely prepared to go to if they do not get into their first choice, but of a slightly lower. Now, on occasions last summer, uh, Mr. Rabin and I nearly pulled out our hair out on occasions because we noticed that quite a few, despite all our best efforts and future efforts, had chosen universities of the same grades, but very often there was something else like they would consider an EPQ. An EPQ, by the way, is a very, very powerful admission tool. We've had actually some offers from universities be lowered if someone is getting an EPQ. So perhaps AAA, or if they get an EPQ at A, AAB. So it's very, very useful. But we did have a very, very good rate of progression last year. So what we're currently doing is, um, last year obviously we got all the students uh, registered um, on, on UCAS and did apply workshops, personal statement workshops. We obviously had that wonderful admission tutor and as you know, uh, Sue Garrett from Bath, who I thought was pretty super. We've done centigrade profiling. So what we are now doing is driving on. They've started their UCAS forms and I am actually sitting them down in sessions, application form filling in the ICT room, I'm having my fourth one tomorrow morning at 20 past eight to actually make sure they are progressing, and my last one next week. The door is open now, particularly early deadline pupils, I'm pushing them to come and see me to get their, their forms checked, that is for those that are going to Oxbridge, um, or are vets or meds, and we are really trying to get on. As Sue Jarrett said uh, from Bath, the early bird really does catch the worm. Yes, I know that Oxbridge and vets and meds schools will actually usually wait for a gathered field, obviously they have an early deadline anyway, and you can expect probably to wait till after Christmas to hear what's going on. But we usually get all the rest of the offers in before Christmas, which is really, really uh, good for the pupils, good for their motivation, <coughs> and it makes them feel really confident. And the buzz that goes around the school as people start getting those offers are really very special. So the door is open. I do have some little treasures that come in, really don't know what they want to do. I'm always happy to sit and research. We've got lots and lots of things online, and we've got the centigrade profile. We've got which university, UCAS. We really do a lot of good research. Very, very happy to help them explore. We also do have Sterlians. I usually look after probably about 10 Sterlians. I do cut this service off at 30. I have said to a couple of you, I do not do washing, ironing, uh, or babysitting, but I'm very happy still if they do decide not to apply this year, which would rather they did and did a deferred entry, to be fair, because they have all the in-house support here, and there was huge amounts of it. Um, but, you know, if they do go away and they want to learn price of Sterling, as I've had probably about six or seven this year, 15 last year, um, I will still support them as well as the best I can. And, and I'm there for you. If you want to come in with, you know, in indeed with your the pupils, I'm very, very happy to see you. Always pleasant to after I have my second cup of coffee in the morning. I do tell them that. I think that's it. I don't know if anybody wants to ask anything. Oh, I should say we've got three or four thinking of Dutch universities this year and two American in addition to everything else. So, you know, past is new. It's scary the eight US ones, but... Hello. Just one um, point to share with people that we went to an open day and they were talking about whatever exams you put on your UCAS form, you have to do. So if you start an EPQ and have it on the form, you can't not sit it, otherwise the offer is not valid. Is what I think what you do is if you are changing your, your A-levels, we'd immediately contact the universities that it's gone to. I would go to UCAS itself, but the form is circulated. So I would then do an email to the admissions tutors just to say, just to let you. It's nowhere near as harsh as that. Okay, that no, exactly it's just quite what they said. No, it? I know. There's usually a way around. We have all sorts of, you know, things that we can utilise. Because, you know, students do. And last year and the year before, and, I, and it does really cost me an awful lot in grey touch-up when this happens, people had accepted their offers and then decided actually they didn't want to go and do that course at that university. They wanted to go to that university but do a different course. That was pretty heavy going, but, but we managed again. So, you know, there's all sorts of things we can help with. Great, thank you, Sharon. <coughs> That's really it in that part of the evening. Um,
what what I'd like to do now that our tutors, the upper sixth tutors, you will um, I hope know and know well, um, feel free to break off into into little wee groups around the building, um, and then once that's happened, feel free to join us for a drink at the table, or if not, um, feel free to head home. Um, but any concerns at all, just get in touch. The more we can communicate on this, the better it might be. Thank you. Lovely to see you. <laughs>